Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather, Veterans Day, on this 11th day of November 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, we've got, uh, let's see what comes up. How's this weather graphic? Starting out, while well, the uh, <clears throat> heavy snow warning continues, <clears throat> for the Seward Highway, the Kenai Peninsula, uh, until midnight tonight, and that's for anywhere, uh, some additional inches of snowfall. And uh, of course, it being kind of powdery, any wind at all, whether generated from uh, weather type wind or traffic wind, will uh, reduce visibilities considerably along the Seward Highway. And that's out, again, could pick up another three, maybe four inches in that area. Winter weather advisory continues out for uh, Anchorage, turning an arm on up into the, uh, I believe, part of the Manuska Valley, Palmer Wasilla area for another one to three inches of snow up until midnight tonight. And then that should taper off enough for the advisories and watches to end. Also, over the Northern Panhandle, there's a uh, snow advisory, winter weather advisory for snow uh, for tonight and into a portion of tomorrow, actually for the uh, Juno area, looking for two to five inches of snow with the heaviest amounts in the Mendenhall Valley. And that's out until 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. Friday morning. And up to the north along the Klondike Highway, Haynes, on up towards Skagway and those areas. Could see anywhere from four to seven inches of snow. And that advisory is out through tomorrow, through tomorrow afternoon till 6 p.m. on Friday. And from there, looking at snowfall amounts, a pretty heavy snow came into the Anchorage area. Uh, up to 14 inches falling in East Anchorage. Uh, just a short distance, lower hillside areas seeing anywhere from 10 to 14 inches of snow. And then lighter amounts out west is usually the case with this type of weather pattern, about uh, just under six inches falling at the International Airport. And this is up until 9 a.m. this morning. And then it looks like there near Merrill Field, about a foot of snow falling there right over the uh, part of the city. There again around Merrill Field there and toward the uh, Glen Highway about uh, a little over 10 inches, 10 or 11 inches, and then you can see up toward Eagle River, anywhere from five and a half to seven and a half inches of snow falling. And uh, that uh, should taper off. Again, the winter weather advisory out this evening could pick up another one to three inches, and then should turn, become more showery, light showers or flurries after midnight tonight. And satellite imagery <clears throat> doesn't show the uh, area clouds too well. Uh, that brought the heavy snow in over northern Cook Inlet and uh, south central Alaska, into, actually into the central Kenai Peninsula as well, and up toward Aklutna Lake, picking up about a foot of snow. And then that tapers off as you head north there, but a little bit of snow did get north of the area. Let's see, Nanana had uh, about an inch of snow or so, lighter amounts in Fairbanks, and uh, not so much over the Copper River Basin. And then that storm system there west of the Queen Charlotte's pushing that occluded front up into the Panhandle with rain, not heavy rain, but uh, about uh, half inch to up to a half inch over the southern southeast coast, lighter amounts to the north. Cake picked up about 16 hundredths of an inch, for example. So not a real big uh, precipitation producer. Uh, wind's a little more impressive. Cape uh, Spencer, let's see, Cape Decision gust 52 miles an hour, Heidelberg gust 51 miles an hour, and uh, Cape Spencer, farther to the north, had gusts of 48 miles per hour. I think it was Cape Decision, I meant to say, had 52 mile an hour wind gusts. And, uh, <clears throat> but again, uh, that's over the southern areas, but I'll be lifting northward that low center expected to track northward off the coast. So it's gonna be a pretty windy, wet night there for the Panhandle uh, throughout the night tonight and into uh, much of the day tomorrow, although that'll be shifting northward and it'll begin to improve over the southern areas. Otherwise, not a lot going on out west. Bering Sea generally under cold air uh, and uh, higher pressure. You can see the uh, 
fragments of uh, cirrus there with the next system trying to push into the far western bearing, or it is pushing into the western bearing and trying to get into the Shimia area. And then a little pressure up off the eastern Arctic coast. Kept it kind of breezy there this afternoon, but wind's not as strong as yesterday. Some areas of light snow. Some areas of the central eastern Arctic coast picked up uh, an inch or so of uh, new snow, half inch to maybe an inch and a half at the most. And the west side, not much at all. Otherwise, uh, Temperatures uh, fell to the mid minus 20s over the Yukon Flats this morning. Chuck Itzik minus 23, I believe. And below zero over the western interior. And staying quite cold today with the clear skies out that way. And then the moderate snow over uh, Cook, northern Cook Inlet and up into the Manuska Valley there. And tapering off as you head north or to the east or to the south. Lighter amounts uh, today down over the southern Kenai Peninsula. And then the front with the rain and snow rain or snow at higher elevations, rain at sea level there mostly, uh, but that'll be as that moisture pushes northward into the colder air, they'll fall as snow again in the advisory areas up by uh, Lynn Canal and into the Juneau area. Otherwise, some snow showers over the Alaska Peninsula, not much accumulation at all there. High pressure making for light winds, pretty nice day out over the western Aleutians, just some cirrus as we saw in the satellite imagery pushing in. And for tonight, uh, that ridge kind of shifts eastward a little bit, but it'll keep the uh, disturbances to the west and direct them north and then turning east there into the northwest bearing. Very weak low up over the Russian far east, really not much of an impact at all. And a weak trough on the Arctic coast keeps uh, occasional light snow going there for the Arctic coast into the north slope, resulting in IFR conditions. Still could be a little gusty at times on the eastern Arctic coast. In fact, I believe there are brisk wind advisories there for the Kaktovik area along that stretch of the coastline toward demarcation point tonight into tomorrow. Otherwise, look for the winds to increase in areas, in normally windier areas, uh, south central Alaska as that gradient tightens and pulls eastward a little bit there with a higher pressure uh, continuing to, to try to develop over the western interior. And low pressure tracks northward off the southeast coast for wind and rain and snow with the snow in the north, rain in the south, heavy at times, but pretty gusty winds. And that front already pushed into western British Columbia, but the winds just with that low center pulling northward there around the pressure gradient associated with that 979 millibar low. And for Friday, that continues northward to just uh, south of Yakutat, so wind, rain, and snow. Snowfall levels rising may take most of the day again up the Klondike Highway to get uh, rain down to sea level, there, or at least down to uh, the surface. And then rain periods of possibly moderate to briefly heavy for the north coast and pretty windy still, enough tight gradient there for possible gale force winds. Windy with diminishing snow flurries. Kenai Peninsula up into the Manuska Valley, Copper River Basin, some of that light snow will get into the Tanana Valley and even up to the uh, Yukon River there, but it'll stay clear and cold out to the west, western half of the state. A few flurries lingering over the uh, Arctic coast and also the Bering Strait, generally high pressure and over the Seward Peninsula, but some of that moisture coming in from the west and southwest may bring some light snow into St. Lawrence Island and then some light rain or snow showers into the Pribilof Islands, eastern Aleutians as well as the Alaska Peninsula. Outlook for Friday, high pressure over the central interior, but still some low level type light snow and clouds with uh, probably some IFR associated with that over the eastern interior there, but a swath of clear skies, and that's where the temperatures will be the coldest. It'll extend down into Bristol Bay. Cook Inlet, dry, uh, still a chance of snow, Prince William Sound, rain or snow right along the North Gulf Coast into the Panhandle, but it'll be much lighter. Winds definitely much lighter and chance of snow over the uh, northwest interior down to the Seward Peninsula. Next system pushing uh, gale force winds and rain into the central Aleutians. Lows tonight, uh, a shade below zero in the Cuscombe Valley, also for Bristol Bay, lower 20s, Kodiak Island, down into the single numbers uh, for the Susitna Valley, Copper River Basin, otherwise 15 to 20, south central Alaska, and upper 20s, northern Panhandle, but the mild southerly flow lows uh, staying around 40 to the south. And into the upper 40s tomorrow and mid 30s for Haines to Skagway, otherwise teens, Copper River Basin, Susitna Valley, and 20s for the Kenai Peninsula, mid teens for your highs, Bristol Bay, near 6 for the Cuscombe Valley, upper 20s, Kodiak Island, and then the lows uh, right around zero in the Copper River Basin, and 5 to 15 for the Susitna, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, lows in the 30s for the Panhandle and uh, five to 10 below for the uh, Cuscocum Valley near zero for Bristol Bay 
and then high single numbers Coquitlam Valley teens Bristol Bay 20 South Central Alaska maybe 33 for Kodiak and upper 30s to lower 40s for the Panhandle mid teens in the Copper River Basin lows tonight below zero Tanana Valley but above zero along the Arctic coast and then highs tomorrow single numbers over the uh, northern interior but warmer along the Arctic coast and then lows and now aviation weather around Alaska Friday morning IFR Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast um, northern Seward Peninsula Yukon Cuscombe Delta some IFR and uh, IFR north of the Alaska range there into uh, portions of the Tana Valley especially over toward the uh, upper Tana Valley 40 mile country Marginal VFR up to the Yukon River, but uh, VFR there, northern Koyukuk, Kobuk Valley, Yukon Flats to the eastern Arctic coast, and improving conditions across southern Alaska, but still some lingering marginal VFR in areas. Panhandle IFR, Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay, and over toward the eastern border. Out west, uh, Bering Sea, marginal VFR, Aleutians, marginal VFR, same thing for the Alaska Peninsula, becoming uh, VFR, Kodiak Island, and Bristol Bay. For the afternoon, Friday, IFR, North Slope, Brooks Range, Arctic Coast. VFR along uh, much of the uh, Yukon River Valley there, right on down to the Delta. IFR, though, over toward Eagle and actually a little to the north, all the way down to the Alaska Range covering the Tanana Valley and possibly into the northern Cuscombe Valley. But uh, pretty good out uh, west of the Alaska Range, improving to VFR, Western Alaska Range, Bristol Bay all the way to uh, the uh, deltas and Kenai Peninsula though holding marginal through the day as well as Turnigan Arm and uh, portions of Prince William Sound Copper River Basin some IFR over the eastern North Gulf Coast Range and again the northern Panhandle over toward the border looking IFR and no change of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians and not much change for Saturday morning except some IFR showing up out toward Chimiana too. Another batch slides into St. Matthew Island to say Gamble. And some IFR, Northern Seward Peninsula, IFR, North Slope from the Brooks Range out to the Arctic Coast. And some IFR again over the uh, Yukon Cuscombe Deltas, VFR, Cuscombe Valley, Bristol Bay right up into the western and central interior. And then pick up the IFR again, say uh, Denali Park over to Healy north side of the Alaska Range on up in toward Tanana and then cunning northeastward there again uh, covering Eagle down to uh, Chicken possibly with uh, IFR North Gulf Coast, Northern Panhandle including Yakutat, Eastern Panhandle and uh, marginal VFR Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island marginal VFR uh, that pretty much holds into the afternoon improving a little bit there around Shelikov Strait IFR Northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, St. Matthew Island just catching the Pribilofs. IFR now pushing into the Western Aleutians to Amchitka Island, otherwise marginal VFR from ADAC all the way up to the Alaska Peninsula. VFR Western Central Interior split the uh, Kenai Peninsula in half, Cook Inlet side, VFR, marginal VFR Prince William side, Prince William Sound side in the North Gulf Coast and portion of the Copper River Basin, less IFR there over the Eastern Interior and marginal VFR for the southeast coast at Lynn Canal and the northern areas there, some IFR. And for passes, uh, <clears throat> lowest conditions, northern entrances of both Anatovic and Attigan, probably IFR throughout the day. And VFR south side, Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR to start, uh, becoming VFR uh, throughout the day. Marginal, same upward trend of uh, conditions there, marginal, lowest in the morning, better in the afternoon. Windy. IFR northern entrance, otherwise marginal VFR, and Isabel, same forecast or same pattern and forecast. IFR in the northern entrance, uh, Mentasta, same pattern, no IFR northern entrance, otherwise marginal. And for Tanita, um, marginal VFR trending toward VFR throughout the day, but the eastern entrance there may hold marginal throughout the entire day. Portage, occasional marginal VFR, and could be possible VFR for Portage. Uh, at times tomorrow, but generally kind of a marginal day. Chilkoot and White, IFR. And for the freezing levels, 2,000 feet uh, in over the northern panhandle, right there with the surface, but the surface down, you can see well south and southeast Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, right across the Pribilofs. Icing, areas of light to very isolated, moderate rime or mixed icing, eastern Bering Sea down to the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians to Atka. 
maybe the uh, East Central Arctic Coast North Slope and across the Panhandle up into the Eastern Interior areas. And from there, Jet Stream, 65 to 95, or 65 to 90 knot northerlies there, across the Eastern Bering, Western Interior, and lighter elsewhere, 9,000 feet, uh, 35 to 40 knot winds with that low center pulling over the Kenai Peninsula, west southwest 35 to 50 into the Panhandle, west 45, turbulence looking something like this. Happy Lunar Eclipse Eve, y'all. We have a partial eclipse coming next week on the 19th, so let's pop into the sky so I can show you how to see it. Lunar eclipses happen when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow. The shadow has two parts, the umbra and the penumbra. And this time around, about 97% of the moon will be in shadow, so not quite a total eclipse. We call these penumbral eclipses. On top of that, our moon is at apogee, meaning it's at its furthest point in orbit, so it appears the smallest. All of us and Hawaii should be able to see this eclipse. It'll start around 1 a.m. Eastern and peak three hours later, ending around 6 a.m. I love an eclipse of any kind. They are beautiful reminders of just how our solar system works. This week, the moon will have a little conjunction with Saturn on Wednesday and then Jupiter on Thursday. So don't miss the show and keep looking up. Ever been to the beach and noticed litter like plastic bottles or foam takeout containers on the sand? Or maybe you've been to a river or bay where there's a bag or a car tire stuck in the mud on the shore, or a bunch of deflated balloons that say happy birthday floating in the water? All of that junk in the water or on the shoreline is considered marine debris. It's anything solid and man made in the ocean or Great Lakes that is not supposed to be there. And anything people use every day can become marine debris if they don't dispose of it properly. And I mean anything. The most common items we find when we do shoreline cleanups are plastics. But we also find rubber, cloth, glass, metal, and paper litter. Sometimes the debris is so tiny, like a plastic microbead from your face wash, that you can barely see it in the water. Marine debris is more than just trash in the ocean. Sometimes fishers lose their gear like fishing traps, nets, or fishing line, and it continues to drift through the water, catching animals for a long time. We call that derelict fishing gear, and it's marine debris. Have you ever seen an old boat left behind on a shoreline? Abandoned and derelict vessels are also marine debris. So let's review. Anything we use every day can become marine debris if we don't dispose of it properly or if it goes into the water by accident. Marine debris can be very small or can be very big and anything in between. But most importantly, marine debris is one of the biggest pollution problems facing the world's oceans and waterways today. How does marine debris impact the ocean, animals, and me? Would you want to swim in a beach littered with trash? Of course not. And the animals who live in the ocean don't either. The difference is, they don't have a choice. Marine species often get tangled in debris, from fishing nets to six-pack rings. If they get caught, they could get injured or even die. And even if they don't get entangled, many animals mistake plastic debris for food and eat it. This fills their stomach with junk they can't digest. Debris can also damage important habitats, like coral reefs, by breaking or smothering them. Corals serve as the base of the marine ecosystem, and impacts here can be felt all the way to you and me. Plus, plastics have harmful chemicals in them. Fishy plastic, we eat fish. The question is, can those chemicals harm us? Marine debris also hurts the economy. It costs a lot of money to clean up, and people don't want to go to dirty beaches. Boats and ships could run into large pieces of debris too, or get their propellers tangled. We need the ocean and everything in it, and the ocean needs us to keep it free of debris.
can we do about marine debris? A lot of the trash that's in our ocean is plastic. And that marine debris is hurting our environment, economy, and health. The problem will only get worse. Unless we change the way we consume and dispose of products. There are solutions. And together, we can prevent litter from ending up in the ocean. Some people might say, well, I'm just one person, so I can't make a difference. But that's just not true. If each person who creates trash, and that's just about everyone, took action, it would add up to a whole lot of change. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention. And we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep debris out of the ocean in the first place. You can bring your own shopping bag, drink out of a reusable bottle, and participate in things like a shoreline cleanup. Join a group cleaning up the beach or grab some friends and clean up your street. It's easy. Be more conscious of how many disposable plastic items you're using. And if you do, where are you putting it? In the trash can? Whoops. Or in the recycling bin? So here's the challenge. The next time you finish using a throwaway item, a bag, a bottle, or utensil, answer the question, where is this going? Because ultimately, when you throw stuff away, there really is no away. It has to go somewhere. So keep asking yourself this important question. How will you keep your trash from becoming marine debris? And now, marine weather around Alaska. Uh, sea ice analysis today, uh, you can see continuing to close off there over the, about the Chukchi Sea, almost uh, completely closed off now, almost to the north shore of uh, the Seward Peninsula. And the Bering Strait gained very close to pinching off there. And that trend will continue for the next few days, continue to increase the uh, extent and thickness of the ice there, especially north of the Bering Strait. And here along the uh, Going south or moving farther to the south, you'll see the uh, Norton Sound uh, continuing to ice over. Still area open water though in the central areas there, but uh, getting uh, all the way around there, Hooper Bay and then on down into Kuskokwim Bay, getting uh, just about all sea ice covered and ice forming also in Bristol Bay now, northern Bristol Bay in that area just south of Dillingham. And then Northern Kilk Inlet, mainly Turnigan, Kinnick Arms picking up uh, some ice now. And moving on to coastal water forecasts, uh, small craft advisories for the inside waters, 25 knot wind, central and southern inner channels with gusts of 40 knots for Stevens Passage, south 30 knots for Lynn Canal with gale force gusts to 45 knots, otherwise gale warnings along the uh, central and south coast, west southwest 35 knots, seas just under 20 feet, small craft advisories for the north coast and eastern North Gulf Coast for west winds at 25 knots. And for Saturday, those winds come down considerably, especially along the coast, uh, east to south on the south coast there, 15 knots, seas coming down to 10 feet. North coast, south winds uh, diminishing to 15 knots, seas subsiding to under 10 feet. And for uh, Lynn Canal, winds coming down, still north though at 20 knots. Stevens Passage, Clarence Strait, southeast winds at 20 with four foot seas. Prince William Sound, small craft advisories, northwest winds 30 knots, seas six feet tomorrow, otherwise Cook Inlet, north at 15 with three foot seas, just under storm force winds for Kamishak Bay, northwest 45 knots sustained, gale warnings for the Barren Islands, northwest at 35 knots and northwest 20 knots for the western North Gulf Coast with 10 foot seas. And for Saturday, North Gulf Coast, southeast, 15 knots. Prince William Sound East at 15 knots. And Northern Cook Inlet, northeast winds at 20 knots, but small craft advisory south of the Forelands for northeast winds at 25 knots. North 30 knots for Kamishak Bay, Barren Island, small crafts north of 25. And for Kodiak Island, Friday, gale warnings, west-northwest, 35 knots, seas 8 to 10 feet. Small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula for north to northwest winds 25 knots. Bristol Bay, northwest at 25 knots. Gale warnings also from Sitkanak to Castle Cape. And for the uh, first day of the weekend, Bristol Bay all the way down to Cape Sarachev. Winds will be north at 20 knots, seas four to six feet. 
And from Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, northwest 25 knots, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, uh, northwest 30 knots, Kodiak Island, north 25 to 30 knots. And for uh, the Eastern Aleutians, north winds 20 knots, sea 6 to 7 feet, Adak and Atka, northwest at 20 knots, Amchitka Island, southwest or northwest 15 knots, and southwest 20 knots there from Kiska to Shimia. And then for the day Saturday, gale warnings into the western illusions of the next system, head of that next frontal boundary. South to southeast winds, 40 knots from Shimia to Amchitka. Adak and Atka, southwest winds 25 knots, seas still only 5 feet. And for Alaska Island, northwest winds 15 to 20 knots, west 15 for Unmec Island. And for the southwest coast, north winds 20 to 25 knots, strongest south on Nunavak Island, northwest 20 for the Pribilofs, north 15 St. Matthew Island, and north winds at 20 knots for St. Lawrence Island, and Norton Sound with four foot seas. Those uh, become pretty light, swing around to the south, just a light south breeze, Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island, about five to 10 knots, two to three foot seas, and southeast at 15 for the Yukon Delta Coast, west southwest 15 knots, St. Matthew, St. Paul, and St. George Island, and northeast at 25 knots for the uh, southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island. And for the eastern Wolverine Sea coast, strongest wind still over toward demarcation point, Barter Island, Kaktovik, uh, west 30 knots, otherwise uh, 20 knot winds to the central coast out of the west and northwest. Northwest 15 on the west side, and north winds 15 knots from Wales to Cape Thompson. And for uh, Saturday, south 15, from uh, Wales to Cape Beaufort, 15 knots southerlies on the western Arctic coast, west 15 to 20 knots on the east side. And for tonight, winter weather advisory for Juno, three to five inches of snow, and uh, till midnight for south central Alaska. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>